Raleigh. This is attorney Sharp Raleigh and we're going to discuss a little bit about the possibilities of IT consulting companies uh, basically not only IT but any consulting agency placing people on different location how can it be possible for them to use uh, their 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 their, their, um, their workforce uh, without violating the new OPT rule uh, as per the form I-983. So as you can see first of all we're going to go um, the, the new rule actually is the problem with, the, with that form 983 it's an attestation so when you look at it from a first look a bird's view perspective most people were thinking that IT con companies will not be able to hire people but then as you dig deep inside of it and I did a, an article on that stating that it's not impossible but it would be very difficult still very difficult a lot of more burden but at the end of the day uh, a solution can be found and it seems more and more minds are coming together and finding a solution and these are my proposition on the on the phone as you know uh, for those who, do, uh, who don't um, you probably already had a look at the at the form so I'm not going to go over the form but at the end I'll go over the form but right now let us go over the solution and the solution here is how can um, basically IT consulting or consulting companies actually hire OPT 24 month student so first of all issues with the new OPT those are the main issues that we see and if you look at the form also you will see those issues will come up you have to make sure that you're not displacing any temporary or permanent workers as you know there was a lot of discussion and a lot of argument from those who were against OPT stating that OPT students are taking the jobs not only of permanent residents uh, US citizen but H1B workers this is not really true in fact but this is what they are claiming so that might not be a big issue for any company to prove because unless they are really having other issues but we will go into details on that uh, pay the prevailing wage I use the word prevailing wage because that's the best I can kind of use to compare but it's not a prevailing wage that they are talking about here they are talking about compensation has to commensurate with the market for example you cannot pay someone who is a high-line IT engineer with a stem OPT uh, as you will pay someone with no experience and uh, someone who is going to be an administrative person so be careful on that prepare the training plan the form itself has this training plan the form itself is known to be a training plan but it's mostly an attestation so you need to have a plan to, to uh, how to do that and we will go into those details in in a minute then you have to state your goals and how the goals uh, the, the goals of the student not your goals at the end of the day the OPT as you see is um, as you can understand is the optional practical training um, not a, a work permit per se so you need to still make sure that the students are going to get something in terms of knowledge of training to enhance basically or to at least achieve what they have studied and we're going to go into that too and of course a big one the work site monitoring this is something that is really the part which is um, scaring most of the of the consulting companies because they don't know how to really uh, cover that and all those are covered in the section I think 3 to 6 on the form 983 so please check it and we're going to go over the form in a minute too so next um, first of all making sure that the temporary workers are not displaced uh, make sure that uh, the company you're working for or if your company has had a massive layoff a lot of people were laid off uh, and uh, especially H1B, L1, any non-immigrant visa workers, anybody who has a regular work permit uh, or someone who's a permanent resident or a US citizen uh, you don't want to hire STEM OPT students because that is going to harm you and if you're planning to to basically fire very uh, in the near future you you also will be in, in uh, be facing some issues because remember once you sign this form you will be in the database and they will be watching you uh, like we say the big brother will be watching so now um, uh, and if you are a student make sure your employer is not hiring other people to replace you mostly people who are in H1B L1 of course firing doesn't mean being fired because of, of good cause for example that person is not working and things like that no we are talking about layoffs here 
So now the next one, pay the right wages, is very important that you make sure that you, you, you get the guideline. And most of the OPT students will be entry level, so you can pay basically level one. If you look at the FLC data center book or the own it book, you should be able to get what um, the code and the salary there. So make sure you're paying that amount. So I am not going to go into that because every time we do H1B, we do that. So make sure as an employer, you, you are doing that and state the goals and how the goals will be met this is another important factor because um, at the end of the day like I mentioned OPT means optional practical training so it is set to to help people to, uh, students to train it is not set to get uh, cheap labor so you need to make sure that um, as an employer uh, or the the you need to make sure or as a student make sure your employer is detailing how uh, the the goals will be met by having you on board with them for example uh, one idea is to break it like every three months how the, this goal will be achieved uh, every six months how the other goals will be achieved and uh, keep dividing it we even recommend putting kind of a flow chart or a graph or something that you can attach uh, and also explain on the on the form itself but also attach something simple where it can easily relate how you're going to really kind of step by step achieve your goals or achieve the goal of the student so make sure it's very important but that should not be very difficult because that's how people learn uh, through experience so uh, first three months they might be doing basics the next three other three months they might be doing a little bit higher level and keep going and moving on like that so now the work site monitoring this is a big one that is scaring everybody um well we i have kind of done some research uh, from my side and uh, the word monitoring if you look at it from the dis diction dictionary's perspective i'm sorry dictionary's perspective uh, i think even webster monitoring refers to devices that means if you are using certain devices and i know many companies do use them uh, to to log in and log out their their, their employees especially when they are working from home uh, they use that to monitor their time but they also use that to monitor their work and secure their work of course that might be some issues of privacy issues of uh, intellectual property that you have to deal with your end client or whomever you you're put placing your students to so make sure that you you have a good device that would be helpful Skype and things like that can be very helpful um, and of course a reporting on a daily basis is what they are looking for pretty much although they have not mentioned it the second uh, option that I've seen is possible is of course to have someone physically on the location where you basically got into monitor on a daily basis the work of the of the stem opt student and that would be the best if you can have that but most of the time it would be too costly or even impossible for the company uh, and client I mean to allow that but if they allow that I, I've heard some cases where they do have people on site so that makes things a lot easier because then that person can attest on the form 93 note that the form uh, 93 the, the the employer and the money uh, the, the supervisor monitor who's monitoring doesn't have uh, do not have to be the same person so you can always use someone else to do that uh, the third option is to have a floating employee or a manager that goes around to check on different different locations but that might not be practical if you're working on on very very remote locations but it might be possible in a small close area that person or the employer himself can go and check but it has to be someone who has knowledge of the work and has enough knowledge to basically monitor the student and the last one um, what I mentioned is kind of a really pushing the, the, the envelope but you can still try it if the employer is willing to place their own monitor and that employer I mean the end client and they have this person sign on the form that might be helpful there might be a lot of permutations there, a combination of all of the above it can be also other devices and maybe someone will come up some kind of software but at the end of the day 
as long as we satisfy the rule of the what they are mentioning as monitoring we should be good to go so now having said that if you look at all this all this is highly possible now with technology with the ability to 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 monitor things i think at this point it might be a good chance for student to actually get um get a chance on their stem opt so we hope that this will be um helpful again this is just as uh, um, what i'm giving you are uh, just suggestions and um, there might be obstacles or ease in the future uh, until we see the USCIS start denying those uh, OPT STEM extensions or coming to the workplace and start taking them away. We can uh, really base our all our our ideas on the assumption that uh, we should be able to to get things moving using those tools that we have mentioned and again these are just purely educational you should not act or refrain to act solely on the information provided no attorney client relationship is created by this presentation and quickly before I go I want to really kind of go over uh, over the form itself as you can see here I, I downloaded the form the 683 and you see uh, I'll go section by section here uh, uh, here it is the section one easy uh, <laughs> these are just information section two this section two is very important you need to know what you mean by certifying what you're doing is under penalty of perjury so you better be careful remember the rules of 212 if you lie on this it will come back and bite you so make sure that you 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 mean what you sign and you follow the rules really uh, to the letter and uh, you, uh, you will d uh, for example for one you have reviewed uh, the form and you understand it you will notify DSO if uh, the employer is not compliant you understand that DHS, DHS which is the Department of Homeland Security may deny it or terminate your STEM or PT remember I was saying until they start coming in and as long as if you're compliant with the law they should not be able to do that but uh, be, be careful that you are compliant um, and and other important part which is very important of course it has to be directly related to your STEM degree you cannot basically just take even if it is another STEM, I mean another uh, field in STEM, you have to be. It has to be related to your specific field. For example, you cannot have a degree in microbiology, and you're working as a computer engineer. So be careful on that. And also, you're you're, you're testifying that you will uh, notify the DSO, uh, the d uh, designated school official, uh, any ch in any changes from this plan. For example, remember we were talking about the plan here. How you will detail it if in case you're changing anything you're going to inform the DSO and uh, how do you inform that probably to a letter or an email and give the details of it and um, now section 4 which starts basically from from really kind of section 3 where the employer really gets involved um, here we have the compensation the issues of compensation it is very important that you meet the the code in the industry and also how much you you're paying and the employee has to give every details on them and this is what's kind of a little bit worrying all the consulting company because they're disclosing a lot of information and here of course the employer certification now for the employer as I mentioned earlier you got to be careful what you are certifying and this is um, where you just have to for example if you go in the ONET book you take the job make sure you're compliant and make sure you explain how this will achieve the goal of the student not just a matter of that and uh, you are basically certifying here that you will make sure that you will meet all the requirements you're not going to miss on anything so here you have space to write and then training now the training part student role uh, how the role is directly relating to the enhancing the uh, student knowledge obtained through his or qualifying STEM uh, degree uh, that's that's a problem uh, that we are we 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 see many times because they tend to put them in general practice and and that's not a good idea so 
uh, all these are, are very important so make sure they don't miss the goals and objectives this is something which is which needs to be um, to be like I mentioned there you need to make sure that you 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 explain this how you're going to divide the goals over time three months six months nine months twelve months uh, tw at fifteen month etc and up till to the twenty four month uh, you can also add here see attached you can put a chart or a graph or something which is very visual to explain the goals that, that will help and employer oversight this is the part that we were mentioning earlier uh, all the stuff that we are talking about here is um, uh, was we were talking about earlier on the on the slide uh, that how you're going to really monitor and all the options and measures of assessment so now you have to also explain how you're going to assess their work at the end that's very important because just because you are but that goes also with the monitoring and also goals and objectives so make sure you meet that and any additional remark you can put here see attach and things like that and and at the end you will have to sign on it and basically um, that can be the employer official with signatory authority and um, this needs to be signed and then you will have the section the section these are all the section of the law that they they have mentioned here so be careful read this very carefully because any failure there will cost you uh, really dearly and evaluation of student progress that's another part of the form which is important to fill and and I, I know people will tend to cut and paste from other people but make sure it is custom made and this is where it's important to have a lawyer do that for you because this is not this is not you can just cut and paste you make one single mistake you are swearing under penalty of perjury which carries criminal charges so be careful there having said that ladies and gentlemen we thank you for for listening to this and anything I'm telling you today again is for educational purposes only you should not act or refrain to act solely on the information provided you should contact an attorney if you have any questions good luck to you thank you